OK, so just by way of introduction, uh, my name is Keith Jones. I'm the head of biological sciences. And together with uh, Lex Kreifel, who's our director of education, our head of education, we're going to spend the next 50 minutes or so telling you about the degree programmes that are offered by our school. If you haven't been over into Building 85, please do so. That's our home, and you can get any bits of information that we won't cover in the next 50 minutes. Key people to talk to, in addition to Lex and myself, will be Dr Amrit Mudda and Professor Malcolm East. They're two of our admission tutors, and they're very knowledgeable about some of the technical aspects of admissions that maybe I don't know and Lex doesn't know. So if you have very technical questions about admissions, you've got very exotic uh, exam results from different parts of the world, then Amrit and Malcolm are the people to talk to. So just by way of introduction, for those of you who are not from the area, Southampton is a great place to live. There's lots going on. Uh, you don't have to take my word for it. Take the word of PricewaterhouseCoopers, who ranked it as one of the top four cities in the UK to live in. Uh, we are a student-friendly city. So for the prospective students in the, in the audience, that means there's, uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, there's lots of clubs and bars, lots of activities. And for the parents in the audience, that really translates into it's actually also a very safe place to live in. We have a low crime rate. Uh, I can't convince you we have a warm, sunny climate on a day like this, so I, I just won't bother. In terms of the university, we're a member of the Russell Group. That, those are the sort of uh, large, research-intensive, top 23 universities in the UK. We uh, collectively hold the lion's share of most research funding uh, in most disciplines. Uh, we have a uh, student population of about 24,000 students, 17,000 of which are full time. We have a compact campus. You're on the Highfield campus today, which is the main university campus. It's a five minute walk from one end of the campus to the other. And actually, if you, were come, if you came here to read any of the subjects, any of the um, uh, degree programmes run by biological sciences, most of your lectures, nearly all of your practicals, will be here on the Highfield site. So you'll have no more than a five minute walk uh, from this lecture theatre. In fact, most of the practicals run by biological sciences are in our home building, in building 85. And if you go there after the talk, if you haven't been there already, there are practical demonstrations on the very uh, basement floor of that building. So uh, we have good transport links. Uh, there are different nodes to the university. There's, there's uh, a waterfront campus uh, right in the city centre, down by the dockside. There's the Avenue campus, which is a five minute walk away. Uh, there's the Faculty of Medicine that are based at Southampton General Hospital, which is about a mile and a half away. And of course, we have a, a bus service, a bus link, that connects all those nodes together, as well as uh, the airport and, and major rail, <coughs> rail hubs. So we're a well-connected city. And also, we're a very lively, uh, we have a very lively student population. If you haven't been there already, do go to the Student Union building and look at all the activities that are run by SUSU, the Student Union. Lex and I, we're not going to talk much about money. Uh, we offer us the, the standard tuition fee in Southampton, £9,000 a year. If you want to know some more about various packages that are on offer to students, then the place to go and visit today is Building 40 or Building 34 and you can learn more about fees and how to finance them. So let me tell you something about biological sciences. We have an academic staff number of around 65. The vast majority of them are research leaders in their field. That was judged not by ourselves, but by the government-led research assessment exercise in 2014. So 82% of our research was ranked as internationally excellent or world leading. Why is that important to you when you come here not to do necessarily do research? 
It's important <laughs> because you're going to be taught by the people who are at the cutting edge of their field. And we think that's incredibly important in terms of gaining knowledge. You're not gaining it secondhand, you're actually gaining it from the people who lead their field. So in addition to those 65 members of academic staff, we have a whole, whole host of technical support. Some of them help us run the practical classes that you'll be doing, predominantly in your first year. And also, we've got technicians who run our research facilities. We have around 50 postdoctoral researchers. So those are people employed on external research grants. They're uh, at the second stage, if you like, of their independent research career. The people who are at the first stage of their independent research career are the PhD students. We've got about 100 of those. They've completed their first degree, not necessarily at Southampton, but uh, uh, from first degrees around the country or internationally. And they're uh, in their training of becoming uh, an independent researcher. We also have a Masters in Research programme joint with Marwell Zoo in wildlife conservation. And you'll be joining us a year in September with uh, a cohort of about 900 fellow undergraduate students that represent the cohort from uh, all of our programmes. So what Lex and I are going to tell you a little bit about today are the programmes that are on offer by Biological Sciences. This gives you the, the detail, really, that we have on the left of the column the degree programmes that we run as traditional three-year bachelor programmes. So biochemistry, biology, biomedical sciences, ecology, pharmacology and zoology. We run an equivalent integrated master's four-year programme for all of those degrees with the exception of the one in blue, which is pharmacology. We only offer pharmacology as a three-year degree. Uh, we look at the four-year integrated master's options. We only run neuroscience as a four-year integrated master's. We don't offer neuroscience as a three-year bachelor's degree. Lex, a bit later on, will answer these questions, which I'm sure uh, for many of you is an important consideration. We do realise making a choice of university programme, degree that you want to study, uh, can be difficult at the best of times. I'm in the same situation as the parents in the audience. My daughter is in the same year group as yourselves, and she's having difficulties choosing which degree programme she wants to do. So even when you think you're plumb for your best choice going into university, we appreciate that sometimes you can get that decision wrong. So we offer a certain amount of flexibility in being able to change programmes once you're here. And Lex will go into that detail a bit later. Because uh, we are a school called Biological Sciences, we span the whole spectrum of biology. Right from the molecular and cellular level, where we've got people interested in, say, structural biology, and how proteins interact with other proteins or lipids and do such things as uh, NMR to work out crystal structure. We go from that level all the way through to ecosystems and ecosystem services, understanding how uh, animals interact with each other in, in their environment and also maybe in terms of the human uh, cost element we put on those associations and what we should do with things such as climate change how those interactions are actually changing with time. In terms of what subject you think you should be studying at university, we think these are important things to think about. Whatever you choose, wherever, whatever university you go to, please choose a degree that you like. Uh, university life is very different from schools and colleges. It's a hard slog. So if you don't come to university with a genuine enthusiasm for the subject that you've chosen on your UCAS form, believe you me, you won't have that enthusiasm probably by the end of the first year and you'll be wanting to do something different. So please choose something that you genuinely have an enthusiasm for. We think as biologists that biology is important. It has um, fundamental uh, associations with lots of things that are going on in the world today, not just at the biomedical end of the spectrum and drug resistant bacteria, but all the way through climate change, food security. These are really big 
societal issues for our planet. It's a really, really important discipline. The third point is, I guess, a little bit more mercenary, is, is that not just, well, just because it's an important subject, consequently, your job prospects when you graduate are very good with any subject within biology. The UK, probably with the exception of America, is the international home of life sciences. We excel, we punch way above our weight in terms of life science research and life science industry. The UK, in the UK, actually, the number of people who are employed in the life sciences industries accounts for about 100,000 people. And in terms of its contribution to the UK economy, it's estimated that that's about 19 billion. So we, we really do, uh, we can really claim that the UK is, is one of the major hubs for life sciences in, in the world. And that's an important consideration, I think, when you invest so much of your money in, in university education to have very good job prospects once you graduate. So I'm going to hand over to Lex now, and Lex is going to tell you a little bit more detail about each of the programmes that are on offer by Biological Sciences. Thank you. <clears throat> it is important to keep in mind that our degree programmes basically come in two different clusters, and it will become clear what those clusters are in the next couple of slides. <clears throat> so one cluster is around Biomedical Sciences, and that is the largest degree program in terms of numbers of students. Biomedical Sciences, as Keith showed in the table, is offered as a three-year BSc or a four-year master's, integrated master's, and it's basically focused on the cellular and molecular basis of human health and disease. How does a human body work when it's healthy, and if a <coughs> human has a disease and illness, then what is going wrong on a cellular and molecular basis? So on the health side, you'll be taught in topics like biochemistry, cell biology, genetics, physiology. And on the disease side, there will be modules in cancer biology, genetic diseases, metabolic disorders, neurodegeneration. So why would this be a suitable subject for you? Why would it be a degree you would be interested in? It may be that you're interested in how the human body works. And it may well be that you have an interest both in biology and medicine, and you're not quite sure which of the two to choose from. Biomedical sciences is an ideal <coughs> compromise between those two, because you'll be studying medicine as well as biology, and you'll really be studying the science behind medicine. It gives you a range of subjects you can study, and <coughs> we'll talk a little bit more about the different options you have in a biomedical sciences degree. <coughs> And that means you're not committed to a very specialised degree because it starts very broad and you can specialise as the years go on from year one to year two to year three, you can specialise in the direction that you are most interested in. <coughs> and as I said, it's also possible to take it as a four year master's degree. So what do you need in terms of A-levels to get in? Two A's and a B. One of those A-levels, uh, sorry, two A's and a B, two science A-levels and one of those science A-levels must be either biology or chemistry. And the other science A-level can come from this list here. Now, if you only have one science A-level, which must be either biology or chemistry at A grade, then it may still be possible for you to get a place depending <coughs> on your UCAS personal statement and possibly following an interview here. So if you only have one science A-level, which then must be biology or chemistry, the door is not completely closed. And also, if you have more unusual <coughs> qualifications, not A-levels, but international ones, then it is also possible to go through <coughs> uh, our foundation year, which, if you pass that, guarantees you a place on one of our degree programs. So together with biomedical sciences, in that first cluster of degree programs, <coughs> are biochemistry, neuroscience, and pharmacology. Biochemistry, as Keith showed, is offered at a three-year BSc and a four-year integrated master's, and is focused on the molecules of life, DNA, RNA, protein, lipids. How are those molecules <coughs> made? How are they formed? How do they interact with each other? 
Neuroscience is offered as a four-year integrated master's and basically is a specialization within biomedical sciences. And as the name suggests, is the study of the brain and the nervous system <coughs> in a healthy individual and also if something goes wrong, for instance, with Alzheimer's. And then the final degree program in the cluster is pharmacology, which is only offered as a three-year BSc, and that's the study of drugs and how drugs interact with a body, <coughs> how to influence the chemistry and the physiology of that body. So what do you need for these three programs to come in? <coughs> You'll need two A's and a B in two science A levels, and one of those science A levels must be chemistry. So in other words, you do not need biology in order to <coughs> get entry into our biochemistry, pharmacology, or neuroscience programs, but you do need chemistry. Your second science can come from this list here. And again, if you only have chemistry as a science A level, subject to your personal statements and possibly an interview, we may still allow you in. <clears throat> and again, if you come with unusual entry qualifications, then the foundation year is also a possibility. So that's the first cluster. <clears throat> now we're going to talk about the second cluster, which is composed of biology, ecology, and zoology. And each of these is offered as a three year BSc or a four year integrated master's. Biology is the broadest of our degree program across the whole of biological sciences because basically it incorporates anything having to do with living matter. Study of living organisms from the molecular level right up until the ecosystem level. <coughs> Embedded within biology are ecology and zoology. So there are more specialized degree programs within that very broad biology degree program. <coughs> Ecology, study of organisms and the relationship they have with their environment. And zoology, as you would have guessed, is the study of animals specifically. And again, going from genetics development right up until evolution. What do you need in terms of A-levels? <coughs> Sorry, that's the next slide. <coughs> Why would you want to study biology, ecology, or zoology? It may well be that, like myself, you've always been interested in animals and plants. And personally, I cannot remember a period before I was interested in plants. As a little boy, I was always looking around for plants and insects and things. And I do apologize to all the insects I killed and the plants I pressed <coughs> in those years. <coughs> it may be, and again, I would tick that box for sure, that you're interested in evolutionary processes and how these processes really have led to this bewildering variety of life on this one little space rock. <clears throat> or it may be that you're concerned about the environment and you want to make a contribution to safeguarding this one piece of space rock <coughs> for the next generation. <clears throat> and of course, it may well be that you tick all of these boxes. What do you need to get in? Two A's and a B, two science A levels. One of those science A levels must be biology. And the second science A-level can come from this hopefully not familiar list here. Again, if you only have biology at A grade, then depending on your personal statement and possibly an interview, we may still be able to offer you a place. And again, if you have unusual entry qualifications, <laughs> the foundation year may also be a routine. So I talked about A-levels a lot, <coughs> and basically for all our degree programs, two A's and a B in your required science A level, plus one other science A level, and you're guaranteed a place. What if you drop a grade? What if you drop to an A and two B's? That's not necessarily the end of the world. As long as you put us down as a firm choice, then we will do whatever we can to still offer you a place, but we cannot guarantee it. So two A's and a B, that's guaranteed. A and two B's, there's a good chance you'll still be able to get in as long as you put us down as a firm choice. And it may still be possible to get in with three Bs, but as you can imagine, we absolutely do not guarantee that. <clears throat> but it's not impossible. But again, that firm choice is important. <coughs> because if you put us down as a firm choice, you're basically telling us, I really want to come to Southampton, and we will try to honor that as much as we possibly can. So technically, <clears throat> you have more chance of getting in with three Bs as a firm choice than with an A and two Bs as an insurance choice, because we will first try to honor the students who put us down as a firm choice before we start looking at insurance. 
And I mentioned personal statements a couple of times. We will read all personal statements, <coughs> even if you've got your two A's and a B, which basically guarantees you entry, because we want to make sure that you really are opting for the correct degree program. <coughs> <coughs> what else do we want to see in our personal statements? Why are you interested in a degree program you're applying for? If you have relevant work experience or voluntary work relevant to your degree program, then let us know about it. And give us some information about you as a person, because that really gives us a feel for who you are, what makes you tick, and why you want to study that particular degree program. And finally, and this is a really tough one, give us an idea about your career ambitions. Where do you hope to be in five to 10 years time? And how does that link to your choice of degree program? <clears throat> so let's look at our overall structure of degree programs. And what I'm going to tell you now basically applies to all of our degree programs. <clears throat> in your first year, you'll get a range, a broad range of different subjects. And most or all of those modules that you study in your first year are compulsory. And that is really to make sure you have that broad foundation that we can start building on. Within each of your different clusters, so within the biomedical sciences cluster and within the biology, ecology, zoology cluster, the first year is almost identical or exactly identical. And that makes it easy to switch degree programs within those clusters. Then in your second year, you'll have a mixture of compulsory generic modules and discipline specific optional modules. And now you can start tailoring the structure of your degree to what you're interested in and to your career. In your third year, you'll have no compulsory modules, but <clears throat> you will have compulsory research projects, and Keith will talk about the different <coughs> research projects that we're offering a little bit later. If you go into a fourth year master's, then <clears throat> you'll start putting more effort into your research. In your third year, your research project is one quarter of your third year. In a fourth year, your research project is one half of your fourth year. So it's more in depth and it's more expanded. And then you may continue on into a PhD, whether that's at Southampton or at another university. So as you go through your three or four years, your depth of knowledge increases and your breadth of knowledge decreases. You're starting to know more and more about less and less as you specialize into the direction that you are most interested in. In all cases, our first year, second year, third year, and fourth year, you'll study for eight modules, giving you 15 credit points per module, 120 credit points overall. So in your first and second year, you'll have eight taught modules. In your third year, there will be six taught modules, and your research project, which is worth two modules, so a quarter of your third year. In your fourth year, you'll have four taught modules and four modules worth of research projects, i.e. one half of your fourth year. <clears throat> How do we calculate your final degree class? For a BSc, your second year counts for one third and your third year counts for two thirds. And for an integrated master's, a four year MSci, your second year counts for one fifth, third year for two fifths, and fourth year again for two fifths. So you'll notice that your first year does not count towards your overall degree class. Of course, you have to pass it, and I would really urge you to do more than just passing it, <coughs> because we will use your first year average for other things as well. <coughs> and Keith will talk a little bit about that later on. So please don't think of your first year, oh, all I need to do is just pass it, really work hard in your first year, and that makes the step up to the second year that much easier. Our modules are assessed through a mixture of coursework, continuous assessment, and exam. And the balance between those two varies between 100% exam, 0% coursework, and 100% coursework, 0% exam. And it really depends on the module where that balance is. A common format is 70 to 75% exam, 20 to 25% coursework. But as I said, we've got the full range. So let's look again at the two different clusters, just to re-emphasize the fact that our degree programs operate in those two clusters. First cluster, biochemistry, biomedical sciences, pharmacology, neuroscience, eight modules each year, as I showed you before. And the first year is common for these programs. And that makes it really easy to switch 
throughout your first year between those different degree programs. So you don't have to commit yourself from day one to one of the specific degree programs in this cluster. You can switch later on. The other cluster, biology, ecology. So biology, first year is exactly identical for these three programs. So again, that allows you that flexibility. You're not committed on day one <coughs> when you come in to a particular degree program. You can switch. So the switching is easy within those clusters. Between the clusters is much more difficult because the first year of the biology, ecology, zoology cluster is not identical to the first year of the other cluster. And one bit of bad news for those of you considering biology, ecology, zoology, there is a compulsory field course in Southern Spain. And yes, I see faces drop already. So sorry, I'm really sorry, but you have to go to Southern Spain, and this is where you'll be. I know it looks absolutely horrible, <coughs> but that's just the price you have to pay. <coughs> Speaking of prices, uh, because it's a compulsory module, it doesn't cost you anything because we will pay for your flight we will pay for your accommodation. We will pay for all the local, uh, <coughs> the local travel in Spain. Uh, your accommodation includes your breakfast and your dinner. What we don't pay for is your booze. <coughs> <laughs> Having said that, you'll be in a hostel, one of two hostels in this village. They have a bar. They have absolutely awful, lukewarm Spanish beer, which costs almost nothing, but it really is dreadful. <coughs> but it's cheap. Hey. Okay, <clears throat> how are we going to teach you? We're going to teach you through a variety of different measures. Of course, lectures will form the backbone of your degree program, of your education. <clears throat> In the first and second year, almost every module that you'll be studying will have practical work associated in some shape or form. And exactly what it is depends, of course, on the module. You'll do your research project in year three, and if you continue for an integrated master's in year four. And what's very important, there will be a large component of independent study. That will be very different from what you're used to. Because now at university, when you come out of lectures or practicals, that's not so thinking, ooh, the day's done, I can put my feet up. It's, okay, and now my day starts. Because now we're expecting you to go further into the textbooks, into the literature, and we expect to see more and more of that as you go from year one to year two to year three. You'll have access to lots of series of research seminars where you're very free and very welcome to join in. <coughs> and on the biology, ecology, zoology course, <coughs> degree programs, you'll also have <coughs> field courses. So I mentioned the compulsory field course to South Spain in year one. Uh, there is an optional field course in the New Forest in year two. And we're in the process of setting up a third year optional tropical field course to almost surely Belize. <coughs> the Spanish field course is free because it's compulsory. The Belize tropical field course in year three will have a cost associated with it, probably something like £1,200. And also, you'll have tutorials. In the first and the second year, you'll have tutorials. And I'll talk a little bit later about the tutorial system that we're operating. In terms of support during your modules, every module will have a site on Blackboard, which is a virtual learning environment. And that module, sorry, that Blackboard site will have all the information necessary for you to take that module. So there will be timetables, there will be <coughs> uh, files with the lecture slides, there will be practical handouts and everything else that's required. What it also will include is recordings of all the lectures. So all the lectures in biology modules are recorded through a system called Panopto and will be available to you very shortly after the lecture has taken place. And that's a very good resource when you start revising or when you come out of the lecture with your notes and you say, okay, I understand the first half, but then <coughs> this Lex guy, he was just talking about things and I really don't understand what he was talking about. I got some notes, but I don't get it. Go into Panopto, click on that particular lecture slide and you'll hear me explain it again. Keith. Thank you. I should say, before I talk about what's on this slide, if you want to know some more detail about specifics of modules that you have uh, for all of our degree programmes in all of the years, then you can go to Building 85 and pick up a flyer from uh, the room next to Latte's Cafe. 
and in there you can you'll get all of the information about what's compulsory what's optional so I'm now not going to tell you about all of the different modules that you can study in year two there are too many to go into uh, what I am going to tell you about is a couple of choices open to you during your second year so the first is illustrated on this slide which is our study abroad module which we're introducing actually for the first time in this coming academic year. What this module allows you to do is uh, to leave Southampton and go and study at one of our partner universities in another part of the world. We don't know, because of the EU referendum, what's going to happen with the Erasmus programme, which you possibly have read about. The Erasmus programme is an exchange agreement amongst European universities. So nowhere, no university that you go to at the moment can tell you anything insightful about what's going to happen to the Erasmus programme. We can only hope that the government will allow the Erasmus programme to continue and to put money into it. We as a university have partner universities outside of the EU. So we still have plenty of possibility for you to go and study in North America and also Australia, and Australia is illustrated on this particular slide. So as a school, Biological Sciences also has specific partnerships with a number of universities where it's only our students that can be exchanged. So you're not in an open competition with the rest of the university, you're in a competition only with students that are within biological sciences. And in fact, the, those specific partner universities belonging to just us are highlighted in red on, on this slide. So um, in your second year, if you wanted to take advantage of this uh, module, then you would tell our study abroad placement tutor, Dr. Hannah Siddle, that you're interested in, in applying. But the key aspect of getting onto it is really performance in your first year. So this goes back to the comment that Lex made. Please don't coast in your first year if you want to go on the study abroad programme because we insist that you can only do that if uh, you're performing at a high level during year one. There's no fees associated with this. All you have to find would be your airfare and cover your accommodation when you're at your, your, the host institute. So actually this year we know in January, uh, for the second semester of the year, uh, we have students going to uh, University of Tasmania, uh, Deakin University, <laughs> James Cook, and University of Western Australia. So we've got quite a few students who are taking advantage of this scheme. We also have an opportunity to uh, take a, a year out a year in employment at the end of your second year. We have a placement tutor, Dr David Tumbarello, who assists you in uh, securing a job for a year outside of the university, uh, usually with one company that we have already existing relationships with, but that's not necessarily always the case. Some of the companies that our students have gone to work with in recent years are highlighted here. You're still registered with the university at the end of the second year. You pay a reduced uh, uh, tuition fee for the course of the year. Uh, but we do know uh, anecdotally from students who've taken advantage of this programme that their um, their employability levels are even higher than students who haven't taken part in the programme. So they do find some benefit from undertaking the programme, uh, not just for that year when they're in industry, but also when they graduate, they find they're near the top of the queue in terms of uh, getting jobs within industry. So it, it's really something to think about when you're here. We think it's good for you and you should really consider it a positive opportunity. So um, whether you decide to take 
the study abroad module or um, take this year in employment, what you'll do is you'll, at some point you'll be with us for your third year. By the time you get to your third year, you do have an amazing array of modules to choose from. Um, if you're on the, the biomedical sciences, biochemistry, pharmacology and neuroscience programmes, then here are some uh, of the modules open to you. I'd just like to emphasise it's not an exhaustive list. There are several modules uh, not listed here, which is simply too many to tell you about. If you're on the biology, ecology and zoology programmes, then the equivalent list is here. And again, the same point applies. This is not an exhaustive list. And this um, one here on the bottom right is the tropical field course uh, that Lex mentioned earlier. There will be course fees uh, for that of about £1,200 to cover your flight and accommodation when you're in Belize. There are also opportunities to study modules that are run by different parts of the university that are not discipline specific but are open to all students. There's about 30 modules within the university currently uh, open in such a way uh, and you, you can see that the names of eight of them on this slide. They vary from year to year so there's no guarantee that that precise module will be available to you in two or three years' time. But you get a flavour for the fact, you get a feel for the flavour of them and the fact that they're very broad in scope. And that might appeal to you uh, that we have flexibility in our programmes such that you can study modules outside of <coughs> biological sciences. There's um, a further level of flexibility that I should tell you about, which is uh, in Southampton we call it a major minor. So you have the ability to graduate not only with your major degree, but also with a minor degree. So if you're undertaking the biomedical sciences, biology, ecology or zoology degree with us, then you have an opportunity to study a minor degree. So. Um, that minor degree uh, can be in a whole host of subjects. At the moment, the university offers 29 minor degrees. Some of them are listed here. So, for example, it might be that you can graduate with your major in biology, but a minor in anthropology. And that might be of interest to you. What that means is, in terms of your minor subject, you have to commit... To, take, to taking modules in that minor subject throughout your three years. You take five modules in total, one in your first year, two in your second year, and two in your third year. Of course, you don't have to take a minor degree, and you can have a smorgasbord of options and sort of have maybe take a language module, or uh, say Italian, if you've got an interest in, in keeping up with a modern foreign language, you can choose a module in, the minor, in, the, uh, in a minor subject here, and some of the, the, the modules that I showed you on the previous slide. So there is a smorgasbord of options available to you, whatever programme you come in to read within biological sciences, but if you're studying these particular programmes, then you can, you can graduate with a minor degree in these subjects, if you so wish. In your third year, of course, one major component of your third year will be uh, the research project. That's 25% of your third year mark. What I'm going to tell you about now is that we offer a broad range of choices for such a project. Uh, we have relatively traditional projects, so uh, a lab-based research project, a field-based research project, obviously, if you're an ecology student, that's probably going to be the default. An in silico research project. So in silico just means you're probably working on data at a computer, because, of course, these days, um, with genomic data, uh, proteomics, uh, the biology field is inundated with large data sets that need a knowledge of how to uh, data mine those, those data sets. So uh, computing skills 
is increasingly an important facet of a degree in biology. So th those three choices are open to you in your third year. We have obviously students who enjoy those choices. Um, some of the projects in terms of their names are illustrated on this slide. I'm not going to read every single one, but the message here is that simply there's a lot of choice available to you. Uh, this is probably more from the biochemistry end of the spectrum. And here you've got one more from the ecology end of the spectrum. So in addition to those traditional types of project, uh, we also offer three alternatives because we realise by the time you get to your third year, although you might be saying to us, look, I love biochemistry, I've really enjoyed my time here, I've loved uh, biology, I know that a research career at the bench or in the field, going on and doing a PhD, simply is not for me. And we feel in those circumstances we should try and give you a choice that matches your eventual career destination. So we offer a module called Bioscience Business, we have a number of colleagues come in from industry to tell you about their role within, uh, say, pharmaceutical companies, what they do. So you learn something about the way that companies protect intellectual property or the way that pharma conduct uh, drug trials. And um, you, you work as a team within that project to develop um, a particular aspect of, of, say, drugs going to market or managing intellectual property. We also have a module called Science Communication. We live in a very interconnected world these days. The ability to communicate science to various levels of audience using multimedia is an essential skill these days. Uh, and so the, you get that opportunity to study that and get upskilled in it for that module. We also offer a bioscience education module. It isn't necessarily just for those students who are thinking about a career in, in secondary school uh, and they're doing a PGCE. But uh, it's sort of, again, it's sort of all about communication. We have um, interactions with two local schools, one at GCSE level and a sixth form college at uh, A level. And we, we uh, collaborate with those in running this bioscience education module. In fact, this year, we had a student on the bioscience education module who went off to do postgraduate entry into medicine, and they were really keen by the fact that she'd undertaken this module and was really upskilled in her communication techniques. So uh, if you stay with us for your fourth year, um, then the, a research project becomes half of that, in terms of the value of it, is about half of the year. So you have a far more intensive research project during that fourth year and that really starts to give you a feel for whether you want to have a, um, a career at the higher levels of scientific research, at the bench or in the field or at the computer. So uh, that's for those of you who are thinking about maybe going on to do a PhD. Uh, I should just highlight the fact that you can always swap from a bachelor to a master's degree during your time here. It is, however, dependent on performance. We would expect you to be performing at the level of a 2-1 and above, so that means 60% above, in order to swap from a bachelor up to a master's. So, in summary, I think what I'd like to remind you of is the fact that we've focused very much on the flexibility of our degree programmes. And actually, many of the points here is around flexibility. That's the buzzword. But there is one other facet of our programmes that I'm going to hand over to Lex to talk about in the last bit of the talk, which is about our tutorial system. Because we're very proud of our tutorial system. We realise that it's such a big jump up from college and school and that you need to be supported very extensively when you're here. So, Lex. So, as Keith said, we fully realise that <coughs> learning, teaching, <coughs> your life will be very different. And what we're not going to do is throw you in at the deep end on the first day of day one, <coughs> of year one, and then after three or four years, have a look, see whether you're still swimming. There's a lot of support <coughs> that you can make use of. And the backbone of that is our tutorial system, our tutor support. When you come in on day one of year one, end of September, you're allocated to a member of academic staff, and that member of academic staff is your personal tutor. 
and your personal tutor will remain your personal tutor until you graduate after three or four years. So you'll get to know your personal tutor, your personal tutor will get to know you, and he or she will be one of the people writing you a job reference, because he or she will really have seen you perform throughout your three or four years. There's also a small group of senior tutors, of which I'm one, and those senior tutors is an extra layer of tutorial support if there is any issue that you cannot resolve with your personal tutor. And just to remind you, your personal tutor is there both for academic support, let's say you're not quite sure what modules to choose next year, or your exam performance has been below what you expected. <coughs> he or she is also there for pastoral support, so if there's anything you're struggling with, then he or she will either be able to resolve it for you or point you in the right direction. You'll have support from other staff and especially the teaching office who will know everything about all the forms that need filling in, what do you need to do you know, if you want to change your degree program or ask for an extension for coursework. <coughs> and in the university as a whole there is Student Advice and Information Centre, there is Health Service, Counselling Service, Careers Advice Service and Enabling Service. <coughs> Now, if you thought that going to university means you can say goodbye to your parents, think again, because you'll get a brand new set of parents and grandparents when you come here. So, no, you can't escape them. <coughs> uh, you'll have two parents allocated to you. Those are two students who volunteered for that and are from the year above you, so second year students. And you'll have two grandparents, which are third or fourth year students. And that really gives you a small group of people that can really advise you on what it is to be a student here. Because, just talking for myself now, it's too long ago that I was a student, I don't really remember it, and it wasn't a different country anyway. <coughs> but your parents and grandparents will really be able to tell you, well, yes, yeah, this is how I experienced that, and this is how I dealt with that. <coughs> and once you graduate, you'll have lots and lots of skills acquired. Not only your academic skills, your knowledge and understanding of your specific degree program and the modules you studied, but also a whole range of transferable skills. From IT skills, working with a range of software packages, <coughs> being numerate, being able to deal with statistics, analyses and risk, time management, you may have picked up a foreign language, you will definitely have developed as a person and you'll also be much better at communicating. Because throughout your degree, you'll be asked to give presentations either to your tutor group or to <coughs> a group of students or to a group of academics about what you have done. And if you become the next Richard Branson or Alan Sugar, we would really like to keep in touch with you and especially would like to remind you where you got your degree from. <laughs> so if you could just make a little note there, then that's all. <coughs> so those are all the skills you will pick up as part of your curriculum. <coughs> What you can also do is sign up for the Graduate Passport Scheme and that is basically a record of all the extracurricular activities that you've done that you feel may be of interest to a potential employer. To give you one example, in Building 85 we have students, first, second, third year and a few uh, <coughs> freshly graduating students in purple t-shirts. They help us on these open days <coughs> and if they signed up for the Graduate Passport then that will be recorded on their graduate passport as something extra, something extracurricular that they have done. So you don't have to sign up for it, but if you want to, you can. So you've got your degree, and one question that we very often get at Open Days is, what kind of careers, what kind of jobs do our graduates go into? And the answer to that is a very wide range of different careers. And that is as a result of that range of different transferable skills that they picked up. So, of course, we see them continue into scientific research, but into a whole range of other different careers, including careers which have nothing to do with their degree whatsoever. We have students going into the city, into finance, earning more money than we do, and of course we have to put a stop to that. <coughs> but other than that, this is all open to you. And the reason we see students go into those careers there is, again, because of that wide range of transferable skills. So let's have a quick look at how university and how biological sciences is performing. <clears throat> As we said, we're part of the Russell Group and we're among the top 1% of universities worldwide. And in the Guardian League table and the Complete University Guide, we're 16th and 17th as a university. 
looking at biological sciences specifically, <coughs> in the National Student Survey, we have very high core satisfaction scores. And in case you're wondering why there is no score for ecology and pharmacology, that's because those are relatively small degree programs where student numbers have not reached the minimum level in order to get a score in, those <coughs> in that survey. So we're not trying to hide scores of 23 here. <coughs> in the complete university guide and various other league tables and guides, we're scoring very high for student satisfaction, fourth in the Russell group, student experience, again, fourth in the Russell group, and course satisfaction, fifth in the Russell group. So we're really up there with the best. <coughs> And last year, 80% of our students achieved either a first class or a 2-1 degree. And if you look at government data in where those students are six months after graduation, then we'll see that the vast majority of them either have a job working in blue, further study in red, or study and working in orange here. And again, ecology and pharmacology are not listed because they're below, they're below the minimum threshold. <coughs> what I want to ask you is if you have any questions, please come with Keith and myself to Building 85 and ask those questions there. And the reason is that we have to vacate this lecture theatre for the next talk because the next talk is already lined up and queued up. So any questions, we will be more than happy to answer them there. Thank you.